<laughs> yeah, I really like this bike. The folks at Velatric are sponsoring this video to talk about their new cargo bike. Specifically, this is the Go One. They sent it my way. Me to take on a literal test drive and share some thoughts. I have a lot of good thoughts. I've been tooling around on this bike a little bit more than a week now. One of the ideas that I've been trying to explore, talking about e-bikes, and this is for myself personally, is how we can take gear like this and, and really use it to offload short trips around your neighborhood, around your community, around your city, and rely a little bit less on using my car for everything we need to do. And after riding all of Velatrix bikes, the Go One is a very practical step in that direction. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. To start this conversation, it's critical that we talk about the shipping and packaging upgrades. I know we all love a good unboxing video. This is a pretty big box. Velatrix has completely redesigned their entire shipping container. This is so nerdy, but it's really cool. The box unfolds to be more of your workspace, and you don't have to worry about lifting the frame of the bike out of a large piece of cardboard. Plus, it's just really clever to see a, a QR code printed on the inside of the box. It takes you directly to a setup video. I don't think the previous bikes were particularly difficult to build, but this is a nice lifestyle upgrade. It gets you up and running a little bit faster. The bike is presented really nicely inside, and of course, it comes with all of the tools and accessories that you need to get this thing up to speed. It was also a really Really nice consideration that right before this bike showed up I kind of hurt my back so not having to tug and twist and get parts out of a box was really appreciated building a few of these bikes now total setup time here was even faster it was less than an hour between opening the box and getting to my first test drive the body on the go one here is really scootery we've got kind of like the flatbed design and a much sturdier kickstand and in setting the bike up that made the assembly on the handlebars and the front tire go so much faster having an easier way to prop up the whole frame. For this generation of bike, Velatric is expanding on their accessories. The Go One has just sort of a flat bed off the back, but you can get a basket for the rear like I've got right here. You can also get a front basket, or you can also get sort of a riding setup so that a smaller passenger can ride on the back so this can become a two-seater bike. This chunky step-through frame is just really practical, and it's very modular for a number of different uses. When I saw some of the initial press photos, I was a little concerned, but Velatric has managed to address almost every single one of those concerns. Like, especially having mesh coverings on the side where if you had a passenger on the back, you'd want to protect them from some of the guts and the gears of the rear wheel. The bike does still come with a little bell and of course front and rear reflectors. Now there's a beefier headlamp that gets mounted to your front handlebar. And the other thing that I really liked on the Discover, we've got a two-stage rear light that is uh, attached to the brakes. This is a bike that's gonna be really practical for little city commutes, for hauling gear, and you're gonna be mixing it up with traffic. So having a two-stage brake light, I think is really handy. You wanna let cars know what you're up to, know what you're doing, and especially when you're slowing down on a bike that can go, get going pretty quick, it's nice to have that little safety feature off the rear. This is another class two e-bike from Velatrix. So that means there are two ways we can get the motor to kick on, either just through pedal power, like a class one e-bike, you push to the pedal and the motor is going to add to the power that you're putting down. Or there's a little thumb switch here and you can go all motor. No pedaling required, it becomes a little e-scooter, top speed, 20 miles an hour. That is so fast, that feels so fast when you're on a bicycle frame. It, it really is a joy to kind of like zip through and you can kind of feel that speed coming off the motor. The battery is detachable, security little key lock there keeps it in place and it can charge in the bike frame or you can pop it out and charge it separately. Velatrix estimates of around 48 miles on a charge if you go all throttle. Now I've said that in previous videos and I get a lot of pe people pushing back in the comments saying, yeah, right, like the bike's really gonna go 20 miles an hour for 48 miles. And Velatric is not estimating 48 miles gunning full throttle as fast as the bike can go. Obviously we're mixing it up just a little bit there and we have five stages of motor assist. Each stage kind of increases the maximum speed of the bike. I'm looking to do a future road test. If you're interested in that, please drop a comment below and we'll make that a separate video but what's the difference between cruising along at like eight to 12 miles an hour versus constantly gunning the motor at 20 miles an hour, what does that do to our effective range? I've only had the bike through one battery cycle, just driving it around for over a week and doing short trips around my neighborhood. I haven't killed this battery yet, but adding to that 
range estimate, Velatric is boasting both motor and frame improvements that contribute to how far this bike can go. Because even with some meaty tires here in this chunkier, more practical frame, this bike clocks in at a lower overall curb weight than their Discover 1, their first road bike that I took on a drive. We're pairing an overall lighter frame with a 500 watt motor in that rear tire. Overall, this is a little less powerful than the Nomad fat tire that I also took for a test drive, but this is a lot lighter than the Nomad frame and it can haul quite a bit of gear. Even tackling some of the steeper hills up and around my neighborhood, I couldn't pin the top speed. I couldn't go straight uphill at 20 miles an hour, but the bike had no issues getting me up the hill only on the motor. Having all that power on the rear tire though, we need to be able to control getting up to speed and slowing back down. Of course, we have awesome disc brakes on the front and rear. The setup on that was actually really easy this go around. On other bikes, I've had to fiddle with the brake pads a little bit after getting the wheel in the front fork. This one slid right in and was completely clear. I don't know if Velatric has worked any magic there with the front wheel housing, but it was so simple and I haven't heard any scraping off of either disc brake on this bike. Get both of those brakes going they're nice and grippy. You've got gobs of stopping power, which is handy because again, you're going 20 miles an hour on a bike. You want to trust that you can slow down safely too. And especially for my neighborhood, we've got really old roads around this community. We've got a nice squishy hydraulic front fork. The suspension is nice and soft. And for all of those gaps and breaks and asphalt and that thick, chunky tire, you can roll through quite a bit of that before you're sort of jostled on the bike. For the actual pedal power, seven speed gearing on these little rapid fire shifters here on your right hand. And on the left hand, we've got a new control surface for controlling the, the bike computer and the motor assist. Compared to the Nomad and the Discover, I like this. This is a nice little upgrade. The throttle switch is a little bit broader and I like the feel of it. It's kind of hard to get a feel on some of those older throttles where the bike was either going full power or it wasn't doing anything. And here I've got just a bit more room. I want to like kind of hit halfway on one of the stages for the motor. But the control layout here is also nicer. The buttons are a little bit bigger. There's a little bit better of a click action for scaling up the motor assist. There's a dedicated button for the headlamp. So you're not having to remember I have to long press this to also control that. And then when you long press, you can also get into some of the settings to change the readout on your, on your display. Just like all the other Velatric bikes, you can cycle through a couple different readouts, pieces of information, your speedometer, your range, the, uh, the battery draw, but then you can also get in and do things like change units if you wanna go from miles to kilometers. That's really cool. It's not radically different than some of our previous Velatric bikes, but it's a little more customizable. You put all of these pieces together and this is just a really well-behaved e-bike. You can kinda see with every bike they build, they sort of learn and evolve and adapt little pieces and bring new tech forward to their new products. From the Discover to the ST, we saw them make a stealth e-bike that was a lower weight class one, but with a really easy motor. They're bringing some of that here to the Go One. I really like the Nomad, their fat tire bike. That's a very exciting ride. It has a more powerful motor and it does everything it can to get you to the top speed of every stage as fast as it possibly can. You probably don't want that kind of power curve when you've got a basket full of groceries or supplies. Here I've got it full of camera equipment. Equipment. The Go One is not as dramatic in getting you up to speed. Can I say hi? Hi. Hello. Hi. It, depending on your experience riding e-bikes, I really like the feel of this. This is one of the only e-bikes that I've ever ridden where I felt comfortable early on keeping the motor active at a dead stop. On the Nomad, I always have to turn the motor completely off, get up to speed with my own pedal power, and then I feel safe engaging the motor. Here, on stage one, maybe even stage two, that power curve is subtle enough that I can start, get up to speed, and then the motor is contributing to me going. And it's one of those things that I think can be really intimidating for someone if they're taking their first ride on an e-bike is just being unprepared for what it's like to have something assist you because it's not like a motorcycle and it's not like a moped or a scooter. It's something a little different. And adding to that tech conversation, because remember every bike gets a bit of an upgrade, also borrowed from the ST, the Go One is basically a giant rolling Apple AirTag, compatible with Apple's Find My Network. This is a huge peace of mind where if your bike gets lost or stolen, 
you should be able to track it back down if it encounters any other Apple devices out in the wild. I'm really excited to see bike manufacturers starting to embrace that kind of technology. Bike theft is so under investigated by most police departments that it often just goes unreported. There's so little trust that the police are gonna do anything if your bike gets stolen, even when these bikes start getting more and more expensive. An e-bike is no small purchase. So we can take some of that investigative power back into our own hands. I'm hoping that we'll see some future upgrades where maybe there's an option. Maybe you're an Android user, we know that Google is gonna be expanding its own tracker network. I'm probably gonna add little tags for both so that I can track via Googly devices and through Apple-y devices. And that way I've got sort of everything broadly covered. But I'm really glad to see that just built in where if you were to stick an AirTag somewhere onto your bike and someone who stole your bike started looking around, they might be able to find it, detach it, get rid of it. Here, it is a part of the bike. They're not getting rid of it. It's practical, it carries gear so well, and and it's also fun to ride, kind of a grown-up ride. You feel pretty good, you're sitting upright, you're getting some fresh air, you're running some errands, you're not in your car. Pack a decent amount of cargo off this rear panel here, up to around 120 pounds of weight off of the rear tire. And while I'm definitely looking at this as a way to kind of reduce some of my automobile usage, it's also got a nice Venn diagram overlap where it could start replacing other mobility things like scooters. It's a near perfect platform for a quick grocery store run. I even took it to our little hardware store. I can use my open ear headphones, my bone conduction headphones, listen to a podcast, just kind of jet over the freeway. It was super clean. I've been test driving Velatric bikes since their very first bike, the Discover One. They kind of got me back into e-bikes where I thought e-bikes were probably gonna be a segment a little too expensive for my own personal use. They changed my mind on that pretty quick. The Go One is a great addition to their lineup. Now they have a number, they've got a catalog of bikes with different features for different riders' needs. You know, we've got the Discover One, that's just a good, powerful, chunky road bike. We've got the Nomad, which is a more exciting, beefy, fat tire, off-roading monster. And a simpler Class 1 e-bike, it's a little bit lighter. And now, we've got practical cargo haulers. This whole video is focused on the Go One. If you need more power, if you need something even a bit beefier than this, alongside this bike, Velatric is also launching the Packer One. A longer extended frame and a 750 watt motor on that rear tire. The Packer looks like it's gonna be a heavy lifter. Marie's gonna kill me. I need, I'm gonna need a whole garage just to stash my collection of e-bikes. All right, we're getting to the end here, folks, wrapping this video up. The Go One full MSRP is gonna sell for $1,799, just a buck shy of 1,800 bucks, but there will be a launch sale. At the time this video was shot, Velatric is putting a few perks together and a reduced price just to properly send this bike out into the public. That's the other aspect, how exciting it's been to see e-bike technology make its way down in price. When I first started test driving e-bikes, they were significantly more expensive. Now, a good cargo hauling fat tire wide frame e-bike, not that much more expensive than some of our specialty traditional pedal power bikes. And you don't even need to buy your own air tag. So Velatrix saved you like 30 bucks there. <laughs> A major thank you to Velatric for sending this my way and for continuing these conversations. I'm going to be doing a few more comparison and I want to do a mileage log video. Let me know if you want to try that motor assist video where we check the range depending on how fast the bike is going. We can try and put some hard numbers down on what kind of range do you really get if you're throttle happy like maybe I am because I like to go fast. But I will, of course, leave a link down below this video for more information on the Velatric Go One, the Packer, and the entire fleet of Velatric bikes currently available for you to check out. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, and subscribing to the channel. All the support lately, all the support, even outside the sponsors, from the viewers. Your support has been absolutely amazing. Those of you clicking on links in my video descriptions, hitting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or maybe you're joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe, and most of my videos would not be possible without their support. So they're basically the best. I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at Some Gadget Guy, basically everywhere. I'm uh, producing my podcast on Twitch. I'm spending a lot of time these days on the Mastodons and the Flickers, and a little less so these days on the Twitters and the Facebooks and the Instagrams. But I will catch you all on the next video.